Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning, the first Sunday of May. Let it be glorious. Let us worship you deeply. For those who cannot attend church, let this be the Sunday worship for them and give you glory and thanks as they meditate, as they begin a brand new week, Lord, today. In Jesus' name, amen. There are two ways the calendar could be posted. And that is, put Sunday first, that's the beginning day, or Sunday last, and start with Monday. I like Sunday first. I think this is a kind of a, not a wrap up, but beginning of a new week. This beginning of a new week of Sunday, let's read uh, 6, 11 through 13 of Song of Solomon. I went down to the grove of nut tree. Now, this is a bride. This is a church speaking. I went down to the grove of nut trees or other walnut trees to look at the new growth in the valley to see if the vines had budded or the pomegranate were in blossom, in bloom. Without realizing it, my desire sent me with my royal people's chariots. Return. Return, O Shilomite, return, return, that we may look upon thee. What will he be in the Shilomite as he were the company? Let me read that in new heart. Return, return, Shilomite, return, return, that we may gaze at you. Why do you desire to gaze at the Shilomite as at the dance of Menaim? <laughs> is, it, is it a riddle? What's going on? Matter of fact, Cambridge Bible says, this is probably the most difficult verse in the whole book of Song of Solomon. Which one? This one. Without realizing it, my desire sent me with my royal people's chariots. What? <laughs> what is she talking about? Well, she said, the church said, I went down into the garden of the walnut. Walnut. Walnut trees. And this is what uh, Elder Hong wrote. I'm just going to read it because it's first time actually learning about this too. Isn't there a lot of ministry in the church? I should not only taking care of my ministry. The Shulamite woman went down to another garden because she was curious whether it was pure or blooming. Why did God say it was walnut garden? Walnuts are ingredient for soap and food. I didn't know that. I didn't know walnut shells were used for soap. Oh, no, maybe a walnut. Oh, walnut itself is used for soap, not the, the skin. What is a soap used for? It is used for cleansing. Food benefits by distributing it widely to another. And walnut trees grow big and provide shade for many people. But walnuts are hard and thick in skin. So you, don't, you can't make soap with them, nor can you make food. To use the fruit inside the walnut, the hard shell must be broken. That way, what's in can come out. Symbolically, nothing happens when you take care of your own and yours only. When we all experience the death of our own self in the church, breaking of our own hard shell, we can provide others with food, abundance, rest, and benefit. This is a picture of faith that walnut tree shows. Wow. So, uh, Elder Hong, who is very, very, very experienced in church life, uh, one of the elders of the mega church uh, in LA, uh, something like 10,000 member, seven, 8,000 member church. And so he understand there are so many dynamics in church. There are so many kinds of ministry, especially church that size. I mean, they do all kinds of stuff. Unless you humble yourself, that you do not pride yourself as if, what you do are the most important ministry in the world. Unless you crack yourself and then uh, be distributed evenly and according to your calling, the church cannot become the body of Christ that it should. So that's what he's talking about. And that's what he gets by this Shulamite woman. Now, instead of just taking care of her garden, says, I would like to go see what others are doing and went down to the walnut tree garden, right? Valley out to the valley to see. And then he says, without realizing it, my desire sent me with royal people's chariot. <laughs> okay, this is how uh, Elder Hong translates or interprets. 
The chariots of my people was uh, meant for transportation at the time. It's transportation, but this cart refers to the luxurious and fast transportation carried by noble people. The Shulamite woman went down to the walnut green, walnut garden. She went to see what other ministry of God was like. She had no plans and never thought about it. But when she went there and seeing what has happening there, she became passionate about other ministries as well. Okay, well said. But that's not what this scripture says. It's about, uh, okay, why is uh, these chariots are mentioned? Okay, so Matthew Poole writes, my soul made me, I made myself, which may signify Christ's activity in stirring up his affection to the church from, so this is my comment, from self-focused to the other-focused. But Cambridge still says, this is the most difficult verse to translate or interpret. But it must be confessed that the translation of Ami Nadib as my princely people is not very satisfactory. Though omission of the article with adjective after noun defined by the pronominal suffix is not uncommon. Wow. What the heck? Let me read that again. So Cambridge are basically saying that, yeah, they translate this as a princely, okay, my princely people. That's how they translate it. But that's not really satisfactory. Why? Because the omission of the article with the adjective after noun defined by pronominal suffix is not uncommon. Why doesn't it just say suffix is common, not, not uncommon, <laughs> double negative, bad grammar according to modern day English. But so basically scholars are struggling with just one word, whether the adjective was there or not, article was om uh, om omitted with the adjective and especially after the noun, and then it will change the meaning, blah, blah, blah. I guess if that's your calling, that's all you want to do the rest of your life nitpicking articles and adjectives and pronouns and that's fine but not for me okay if that's your calling and that's fine i'm not judging you i'm just saying that i want my life to matter or not just nitpicking articles and adjectives and so so what so what does that mean to me okay this verse okay and there are many other verses i don't understand but what does that mean what does it mean when the Shilomite woman says, man, I'm going to care for other ministry. I, 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 want, I want to make a attribute to, to what they do. That's what we need to. See, the verse 13 says, return, return. These are the friends. So it takes commentator to actually go into the text and read and find out, is this the bride saying or is this the friend saying or is this the Solomon saying? Well, this particular verse is the friends. All the friends are saying, return, return, O Shilomite, return, come back. The word return is written in imperative. It's not a choice. It's not like, if you have, if you like to come back to us, return. No, it's command. Return, you have no option. Just come back. We need you. Elder Hong writes, the, because the Shulamite woman is so mature and influential, people who have experienced her is asking, don't go anywhere else, but come and help us. Come and stay with us. And that's why it was stated, return repeatedly. Return, 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 return. Isn't it nice to be asked to be back? Yeah, it's so nice. And why people want, people want to share time with you? Because... They get blessed. They, they're touched. They somehow you add value to to them, and I think this is very important challenge. You know, people say that oh, I'm lonely. No one, nobody wants to talk with me. Uh, instead of just focusing on that fact, ask why. How come nobody wants to spend time with you? <laughs> Maybe because you're so self-absorbed and so narcissistic, or you always talk about yourself. I mean, I've been accused of doing that, uh, especially with my wife, that you're so narcissistic. I said, hmm, okay. And I need to deal with that. But uh, 
yeah, I remember just uh, one elder. I mean, honestly, I had to pray. I said, God, do I really have to see it? Because uh, uh, because of the relationship we'll meet, but if there was one hour, he would talk about himself, the excellency of his work, about 55 minutes. And he never, ever bothered to ask, so Pastor O, how is your ministry in Cambodia? Never. Uh, so after many years of that, I said, Lord, I really don't like this uh, fellowship, right? Can I be excused from this fellowship? And the Lord did. Well, unless they approach, you don't have to meet. So I haven't approached. And it's been now a few years. <laughs> Thank the Lord, you know, unless they want. And they said, oh, you know, well, because it's so hard, you know. I mean, share a meal, there's got to be give and take, right? I mean, gosh, you know, I just came back from Cambodia and I do this crazy ministry and really never bothered to ask. So, oh, hey, how's your life? Tell me a bit about you. You know, it's all about like, oh, I'm so great. Oh, I'm making so much money. I'm so happy. All my kids are the greatest. They all become successful, like, Hearing that over and over and over and over again, I get tired. You know, I'm, I don't, I, I just, I'm a, I'm a human being too, and I, I, I really had to pray, Lord, I, I don't really enjoy this fellowship, Lord. Can I be excused from that? And God did, praise the Lord, right? And so uh, next time we meet, I think I'm just gonna be, be more blunt and say, Hey, I think there's, you should ask me a question, you know how I'm doing <laughs> instead of talk about how great you are you know 90% of our conversation so be aware brothers and sisters not self focused but others focused joy Jesus others and you let joy manifest in your life today in Jesus name amen see you guys tomorrow Mwah.